Hey guys, so I'm going to do another Neville reading before I head into work from the Neville collection. Um, and I guess we're going to read, oh lord, it has to be a short one. No, not I am. Consciousness, power of assumption. How about power of assumption? Oh god, maybe, hopefully it's not too long. Okay, that's good. Power of assumption. Let's get to it. All right, man's chief delusion is his conviction that there are causes other than his own state of consciousness. All that befalls man, a man, all that is done by him, all that comes from him. Oh my God, my hair is so frizzy. Sorry. <laughs> um, all that befalls him, is, all that is done by him, all that comes from him happens as a result of his state of consciousness. A man's consciousness is all that he thinks and desires and loves, all that he believes is true and consents to. That is why, a, oh God, I forgot my mic, my earbud. Oh, well, hopefully you guys can hear me. Can we turn off the heater then? The first time I'm using the heater in, since last, earlier in the year. Well, hear me turn off the car too. Good Lord. All right. That is why a change of consciousness is necessary before you can change your outer world. Rain falls as a result of a change in the temperature in the higher regions of the atmosphere. So in like manner, a change of circumstances happens as a real result of a change in your state of consciousness. Romans 12 to be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind to be transformed the whole basis of your thoughts must change, but your thoughts cannot change unless you have new ideas. For you think from your ideas, all transformation begins with an intense burning desire to be transformed. The first step in the renewing of the mind is desire. Yeah, I remember I was saying in my um, manifesting vlog yesterday, um, when you want something, and that's something you're not on level with yet, you have a desire that is like above you, you're going to get shit thrown in your track to bring you up to that level, right? That only makes sense. So that's what I've discovered is why bad things happen sometimes because without the bad things, we don't have, we don't um, change. Since when do we change when things are going good? We don't. <laughs> so think about that. That's one thing that I've really discovered. Anyway, the first step in renewing of the mind is desire. You must want to be different and intend to be before you can begin to change yourself. Yep, and you don't want to change until things happen to force you. Then you must make your future dream a present fact. You do this by assuming the feeling of your wish fulfilled. By desiring to be other than what you are, you can create an ideal of the person you want to be and assume that you already are. Or you are already that person. If this assumption is persisted in until it becomes your dominant feeling, the attainment of your ideal is inevitable. The ideal you hope to achieve is always ready for an incarnation, but unless you yourself offer it human parentage, it is incapable of birth. Therefore, your attitude should be one in which, having desired to express a higher state, you alone accept the task of incarnating this new and greater value of yourself. Big breath. <laughs> in giving, I'm trying to hurry before I go in. In giving birth to your ideal, you must bear in mind that the methods of mental and spiritual knowledge are entirely different. This is a point that is truly understood by probably not more than one person in a million. You know a thing mentally by looking at it from the outside, but comparing it with other things by analyzing and defining it by thinking of it, whereas you can know a thing spiritually only by becoming it, only by thinking from it. You must be the thing itself and not merely talk about it or look at it. You must be like the moth in search of his idol, the flame, who spurned with true desire, plunging at once into the sacred fire, folded his wings within till he became one color and one substance with the flame. <laughs> he only knew the flame who in it burned, and only he could tell who never to tell return from Bird Par Parliament by Farid Undin uh, Attar. Translated by Edward Fitzgerald. Okay, that's unnecessary. Just as the moth in his desire to know the flame was willing to destroy himself, so you must become a new. So you, in become a new person, be willing to die at your present self. Yep. And when you die, 
um, your current self, you need to transform, right? Um, because who wants a half-assed relationship? <laughs> if that was the case, you know, I would have stayed with my husband in that version. And I have to become a new version too. So, so it is. All right. Uh, you must be conscious of being healthy if you are to know what health is. You must be conscious of being secure if you're to know that se what security is. Therefore, to incarnate a new and greater value of yourself, you must assume that you already are what you want to be and then live by faith in this assumption, which is not yet incarnate in the body of your life. In confidence that this new value of state of consciousness will become incarnated through your absolute fidelity to the assumption that you are what you desire to be. This is what wholeness means, what integrity means. They mean submission of the whole self to the feeling of the wish fulfilled in certainty that the new state of consciousness is the renewing of the mind which transforms. There is no order in nature corresponding to this willing submission of the self, so the ideal beyond the self. Therefore, it is the height of folly to expect the incarnation of a new and greater concept of self to come about by natural evolutionary process. That which requires a state of consciousness to produce its effect obviously cannot be affected without such a state of consciousness and your ability to assume the feeling of a greater life to assume a new concept of yourself. You possess what the rest of nature does not possess imagination, the instrument by which you create your world. Your imagination is the instrument, the means whereby your redemption from slavery, sickness, poverty is effected. If you refuse to assume the responsibility of the incarnation of a new and higher concept of yourself, then you reject the means, the only means whereby your redemption, that is, the attainment of your ideal, can be effected. And not affected, he spells it effected, affected. Imagination is the only redemptive power in the universe. However, your nature is such that it is optional to you whether you remain in your present concept of yourself, a hungry being longing for freedom, health, and security, or... Choose to become an instrument of your own redemption, imagining yourself as that which you want to be, and thereby satisfying your hunger and redeeming yourself. Then he ends with some quote from, I don't know where, it doesn't say, Oh, be strong then, and brave, pure, patient, and true. The work that is yours, let no other hand do. For the strength of all need is faithfully given from the fountain within you, the kingdom of heaven. So imagination and the power of assumption and blah, blah, blah. And I have to go and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good Monday. Bye-bye now.